Hello everybody, welcome back to Hollow Knight. In the last episode, we, well, started the game, and that's it. I kind of explained everything there was to explain at the get-go. We got the first map, we went to Dirtmouth, and that was it. In this episode, frankly, I don't know. This game, I'm going to say this now, it's episode two. This game will not be structured at all. How do I know that? I can't structure the game for the life of me when I normally play it. When I record it, I have to make it like 30 to 40 snip minutes of just content. That's going to be really fun when I don't have a place to go. So a lot of these episodes are going to be just filled with fun talking. I love it because I get to talk, but also it's going to be a mess. But if I go for 100%, that's kind of the, the life I live. It'll all be progress done for the most part for right now for a while. So don't worry at all. Okay, don't worry at all. Before I ruin and make all my audience run away, let me actually start the episode fully. All right, well, being that we got the, everything there is to get for the first episode, how about we start moving and trucking along, you know? We've got a map now. I mean, look at it. We can't see exactly where we are, but we kind of have pinpoints and, like, an idea of where we are. Obviously, we're by the the little, by Cornifer, that's his name, Cornifer symbol in the bottom left of the map. So, we're there. We obviously know that we're there. But where to pass that point? No idea. I suppose that's really on us to figure it out. Oh, God. I continuously forget that these guys exist, and then they just kind of show up, and I'm like, oh, hey. The thing is, you don't really see these guys a lot. Um. Oh, wow, I am terrible. We still have yet to see what death looks like, and death is fun. Um, yeah, death is really, it's, it's something else. So, uh, make sure not to die. And if you do, you know, die in a good place. Um, yeah, it's it's death features very similar to one that we already know. And that's grub number two. Uh, I, every time that you get a grub, if you go back to the, the grub guy, the grub father, he'll give you something. So just keep that in mind. It's very useful to remember to come back to him. Wow, I'm terrible right now. It's very useful to remember to go back to him from time to time especially once you've collected like a shit ton of grubs uh he'll likely have something for you either being uh, uh the currency that i can never remember the name of or something else of that kind of sort yeah just make sure to go back to him it's very important you do how important very I don't know why I can't remember the name of it, but it's it's important currency. Sadly, it doesn't like auto get picked up. Like if this was Dark Souls, this shit would just get picked up normally, but it's not. Oh, and also there's just shortcuts out the wazoo in areas. Like right here, we could just skip all of that. I don't wanna though. Because we want to explore everywhere. Yeah, there, there, are, uh, there are a few rooms in this game that are like this. Not all just enemy rooms are like this. But, you know, every Metrovania has to have a little enemy fun. What are these called? I legitimately can't remember what these... Um, this currency is called. It's like shells or something of that nature. I legitimately can't tell you because I don't know. If I knew, I would. Trust me, I would be right there telling you. Uh, huh. Does it tell me? Oh, Geo, of course. I'm an idiot. Of course I knew that. I'm so dumb. It's Geo. Yeah, Geo is, like, it's pretty nice. Uh, if you lose your Geo, it's bad for, like, early in the game to late game. But you can always grind it. It's like Souls. 
And, you know, that comparison is more true than you could ever know, honestly. Yeah, it's it's just like Souls. So just keep that in mind and be careful when you're dancing around. They're very useful. So yeah, I mean, that's really it. My headphones have been really acting up recently, and I was unsure if I could record these videos today. That was an honest worry of me. That was an honest worry that I had today because literally my headphones were messing up. Right now they're not messing up, but I think I'm going to have to buy some new headphones, which stinks, but I think I found a good price for one. They're like, honest, it's $17, but here's the thing. I'm fine with that. One million percent. I don't need anything fantastic. I need something that's just durable. And it is durable. So that's wonderful. All right. So we're going to sit down at this bench. The benches are the save points. And that's basically all you need to know right now about them. They're sprint about everywhere and they're useful. But they're your save points. Those are your bonfires. That's where you quote unquote level up you don't really level up in this game but oh i'm sorry he's an animal he shouldn't be speaking anyways so the stags another fun aspect of this game he is the waypoint system how so he just runs he just straight up fucking runs to places how useful is he pretty useful um you're gonna use him a lot more early game than you will late game i feel like because late game you have all these powers and abilities you can probably get there faster plus there's other shortcuts that open up that are a lot easier to get to so yeah fun um there's stack places uh just about everywhere and by that i mean there's 12 so zelda she is the the corner for his wife the fun stuff Basically, what she does is she will sell you uh, a charm or two. We'll see what these do later. Uh, she'll just give you the quill, which is very important. Pins, which are also very important. And little markers that are not important at all. Let me go through what everything does. Uh, charms, there's like 45 of them in the game. And you get each one in different ways. They're basically just ways to boost your character. And just, you know, just kind of level it up right make you do certain things that you couldn't do before or do more damage or you know hit farther hit faster or every time you heal you are protected or you heal double but it takes longer they're very important to have and wow i have the exact amount for the compass they just make sure you use it right now i'm not gonna buy it why because the next and most important thing is the quill You'll need this to update your map with new areas as you explore. It's essential to anyone serious about mapping. The quill, every time we set it a bunch, a bench, you will update your map. But that is if you sit at a bench or die. Um, if you die, you respawn at a bench anyways, so you're sitting at a bench. Basically, we have the map. We have the blueprints, but we don't know where we've scouted out. Cornifer gives us the blueprints, and then we sit at a bunch and fill it out. Once we purchase this, we never have to buy it again. This is a very important item that I forget that you have to buy. So, we're going to buy this first. It's super important to have. And then next are the pins. Basically, as we fill out the map, pins are going to be very useful. Basically, pins, they tell us exactly where things are. This shows us where benches are that we've already explored, or benches that are just, like, up ahead in a map. Cocoons... We don't technically know what they are yet. We just, I passed one in episode one and I forgot to even mention it. But they give you more health. More health that's temporary. It's it's just there for a few hits that you need on a boss or something. But it's still useful to have sometimes. Then we have vendors. Basically, everyone who sells something to you. Nothing special. Stags. Where do stags at? Easy as that. And then hot springs. Hot springs are basically benches that heal up your soul and your health, but they don't act as benches. You can't equip new charms. You can't 
save there. They just normally act as places to heal up quick and get your soul back. Not very useful. For all this stuff, I'm not going to buy really any of, it right, any of it right now. Why? We don't really need it. And that's fine. So, with everything, how about we sit at this bench right here and scribble a little in our map. Every time you have uh, go onto a new place, your map will update and it's a map update at the bottom. As you can see, every place that is now colored in is the place that we've been. We've been just about everywhere on that map and even more. That's why that quill is so important. With the ability to just get everything and see the entire map that we've explored is very important in this game. And if you don't have the quill as soon as you start the game, it kind of messes you up because you don't know where you've explored. Like I said, I completely forget that we have to buy that item because it's so useful. Yeah, I, it's 120 Geo. Late in the game, you have like, I, I, in my other save file, I have like 6,000 Geo just there. And that was after spending 12,000 on something. You don't need a lot of Geo through this game, but you need enough. You do. You do. Ah, yes. My fabled friend. This guy ain't too bad. I always somehow did terribly when fighting him, but now I'm not going to. He's actually really easy. As long as you just jump away from him, he's no problem at all. I don't know how I continuously would die to that man, but I did. Am I proud of it? A little bit. Why? No idea. I honestly couldn't tell you. But whatever. Pretty open area here. And it doesn't seem we can go over there. Fine. We'll go up here. I mean, what's the worst that can happen, really? I mean, honest to God. I mean, what, we're just going to get a bunch of enemies? Hi. See? I mean, look, this is nothing. Just a bunch of enemies. Oh! Hi. So this is the false knight. Or as the German person would say it, Falsch. Why? I don't know. They're German. Do you think I know German people? It's not like I'm in German 4. He is a fun boss. He is the first boss you fight in this game, depending on how you fight. His whole thing is that he jumps a lot and he swings his hammer. In concept, he's not hard. In practice, still not hard. Uh, between every phase, he will jump into the middle of the map and then swing down his mighty hammer and have debris fall. Every time you hit him enough times, he falls over and you gotta hit this little, little, little head of his. When he's done that, he's gonna do that. That's it. This fight isn't hard by any means, but don't think that it can't be hard ever. Why do I say that, huh? Good question. Well, <laughs> let's just say we're gonna be fighting him again, but it's not gonna be nearly the same fight or anytime soon. Just let out your ba let out your baby and goodbye. Okay, let's go get him. Hey, man. Um, you okay? You good? You good? All right, let me just... I'll just put you out of your misery. Bye. Have a nice time. If you look closely... Do it. Do the thing. Do the thing. Do the thing. Do the thing. Oh. Ah, yes. It's actually a bug. Look at that. It's a bug. I actually didn't know you could hit it. That's news to me. But yeah, it's a real bug. I'm bullying him at this point. But that is the first boss down. 
I mean, at the rate we're going now, shit, we'll be done by episode 20,000. There's a lot of bosses in this game, and uh, we'll see just how many. I'll tell you just how many later. But, yeah, first boss down, it's, uh, it's good. Basically doubled the amount of Geo we had, or actually more than doubled. And we unlock a city crest. Uh, we don't know what that does quite yet, but I'm sure that we'll know soon. Why am I so sure? Magic. And just like that, we've gotten past that little marker. And we've basically, we have explored every single point on the map that was marked. Fun. But don't think that is where it ends. For it's only been like 11 minutes. Actually, it's been like 17. If we look, like, dude, everything is connected here. I love it. All right. Yo, what's up, guy? Oh, -ho. that's how you get. Yo, what is this? Yo, what is this? Titan Souls? Like, isn't that what he does when he dies? <laughs> when he kills a boss every time? Pretty sure. Consume the vengeful spirit. Tap circle to unleash the spirit. Spells deplete soul. And he drugged us and put us in a cave. Good to know. Yay. Oh, you woke up. Hmm. Oh, now you need help, huh? All right. I see how it is. Okay, so with vengeful spirit, basically we just shoot out a giant projectile that does a shit ton of damage. And by a shit ton, I mean like more than what we have right now, sword wise. <laughs> Will it be a shit ton later in the game? Hell no. Very strong though. It's still very useful and strong. But it's a new power, which is neat. We need more of those. But there is one flaw with it though. We can't use it 100%. As you saw and heard, it takes soul. What does that mean? All that means is that we can't use it infinitely. Uh, we get soul from killing enemies or destroying statues that are nearby that will give us souls. We'll see more of what they look like later, but basically killing enemies or hurting enemies. It does this, uh, they both do the same trick. Uh, with that in mind, your soul is like the, the most important thing that you have in your kit. So don't be using it willy nilly and make sure that you're using it when the time's right. When do you think the time's right, huh? Well, I suppose it really depends on when you feel that it is necessary to use. Your soul heals you, but also does damage. You want to make sure that you use it whenever you need. This is the shrine I was talking about. You want to make sure you're using it whenever you absolutely need to. If you don't absolutely need to use it, is it really necessary? Well, if you want to have fun and fight a, a certain enemy a different way, fine. That's understandable. But if you are, you know, not trying to have fun and you're just using it willy-nilly, yes, it's a bit of a waste. But fuck it. Do you, man. I'm not going to stop you. Do whatever you want. Just remember, it's what you use to heal with. It's very important that you don't just immediately use it with damage if you don't have any soul to use with healing you kind of mess up so this is what the cocoon i was talking about before the cocoon gives us blue health and it makes the screen blue basically right now we have seven hits instead of five however only five of those are rechargeable you know how we couldn't hit this guy last episode now we can he only does that right there when we come close to him when we're far away we can hit him as much as we would like but he counts as a, like a little mini boss and honestly after the beginning of part of the game you like never fucking see him again you would never see that guy again why is that no clue we get a charm the soul catcher equipped a charm to activate its powerful abilities so basically, now comes the point of the game where we get charms. I already talked about charms before. Um, I'm not sure if I stated that you can get them and you can use them at the bench, but you can use them at the bench. There are, let me count, 
There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are 36 charm slots here. I think there's more. I feel like there's more than that, but I guess I'm just wrong. Yes, that was quick maths, and I did my maths wrong. This is actually 40. There's 40 of them. There's four. I don't know how I got nine out of this. There are thir <laughs> there are 40 charms. Uh, as you can see at the top, we can see all that we've equipped. And under that, you can see notches. Notches basically limit the amount of charms that you can use. Every charm has a different amount of notches. This costs two. The compass, I believe, also just costs one. And whatever, whatever, whatever. This charm increases the amount of soul you gain from strike an enemy with a nail. Very powerful, but not. it can get better. For right now, the notch and charm system is useless for us because we don't have any charms or other notches. So we just get more soul now. Would that be forever? Not at all. But who cares? I surely don't. All right. Sorry, I missed you. If you're feeling lost, why don't you pop into the store, purchase a map. So every time you leave or fight the area of the boss or do something, I don't know what does this for him. Um, I think it's probably when you fight a certain boss. He will move, and he'll go to the next area. If you haven't bought his map, what you can do is you can actually go back to Zelda and buy your map from them. Uh, there will be points in time until I will have to do that, but that is not going to be any time right now. You can always find Cornifer somewhere in the map and buy it from him for the most part. There are places where it's much harder to find him or you didn't do it in the right order. So you're going to have to buy it from the, the map woman. But that's fine. It, literally, I went the wrong direction. I have this map right here and I still go the wrong direction. I am... I'm down there, the bottom left, so I need to go up. Luckily for me, I know the map pretty well because um, I used the compass for about the majority of the game, and then halfway through the game, I was like, I'm not going to use the compass anymore, and then I just stopped using the compass, so I have an idea of where I am at all times, but not always. Sometimes I just get lost. So that's fun. Getting lost in a game like this, where a lot of the stuff kind of looks similar, because you'll go through the areas so many times that you'll think one thing connects to another and you'll just be completely wrong. Trust me, that happens so much time. How so many times when you don't have the compass on? For right now, make sure you have the compass on. I mean, you only really have two charms the entire beginning of this game. After that, after that little beginning segment, which we're already coming to an end of. Yeah, um, you, you're still going to want the Wayward Compass. It's important. Um, just so you know, you can actually use three of the um, projectile soul things before, uh, before you run out. From full thing, you can do three of whatever attack. I'm pretty sure everything costs the same amount of soul, so... If there's ever an issue like, oh, can I heal or will this will this not be enough? It's always enough. If, if it is white, that means you can do stuff. If it is gray, it means that you can't do stuff. Keep that in mind. Wow, that was terrible. But well, welcome to a new area. Already? Yes, already. We've already kind of explored all of Forgotten Crosswoods. Now... There's nothing forgotten about it. We're now in Green Path. Green Path is the beginning of where the game stops coddling you. And what do I mean by coddling? The game doesn't really coddle you ever. But like, this stops. it stops the tutorials really. And this is where the game kind of starts to let you... Um, okay. It starts to let you have your own wings. If you want to go somewhere... You might most likely be able to go there just fine. If not, find the power-up that let, that lets you. If you can't find that, go somewhere else. This is where the point in the game where you can just go about anywhere. And if you can't go there, fucking find the power-up guy. And that's it. 
giving you the power to just walk around and do whatever is the exact reason why I love Metrovania games. You have to find a certain power up and then, holy shit, I could go somewhere new. And it's the realization that, oh, I can now go over here where before I couldn't is what I love about these kind of games. That, that ability to explore is just an incredible feeling. Without exploration, I don't think I'd have as much feelings for this game as I do. This game's very fun. It is. And while I have said before that I weirdly didn't want to play the game at all, I got to this point in the game and I said, huh, maybe I was given a bad rap. And I was. I've been meaning to play this game for so long. And I was sure that I was not going to like it. Same thing with Salt and Sanctuary. I'll go more into that when I actually play that game for the channel sometime. But you got to understand. Holy shit, who is that? Who is that hot mama right there? I don't know, but I just felt 20 feet. <sighs> I don't know if I can make that jump, but I'm now very tempted. Dude, I feel like I can. There's no fall damage in this game, except if you fall in spikes. So watch out for that. No, you can't make that jump. That's so sad. <sighs> well, eh, whatever. So, who is that? Fuck it. I, I don't know, man. Some hot babe, maybe? <laughs> Those guys explode. Watch out. Yeah, it looked like some hot babe that I want to you know, bug seduce. <laughs> bug seduce. And how would one describe what a bug seduction... Seduction? Wow. Seduction. First off. Oh, also... You get an audio, um, a uh, heist, uh, we're gonna have to purchase this from you quick. You get an audio, uh, little hint to as to where Kernifer is, because you can hear him hum. So that's neat. Also, once you bought the map and you already have the quill, you already fill out the parts of the map you've already been to. It's often not many, but you still can, which is awesome. Basically, it has the same effect as sitting in a, on a bench. Basically, not 100%. It's fine with me, man. It's fine with me. I just... Uh, playing through this game again. Again. <laughs> I should say again twice, because I have been playing through this game. It's just a fun experience. And if you haven't picked this game up before, it is fun in a different way that Doom is, but in yet the same way. Hello, sir. Tiny squib, you approach Phyllis. Are you hunter like me? Do you feel the urge inside to stalk, to kill, to understand? Then take it, my journal. It will aid you. At first, the text may seem difficult to discern, but a learned hunter will come to understand its words. Venture the depths of this land and slay its beasts. Provide yourself a weather to mark the hunter. So now we have a journal. Now we're gonna write all our diary entries and lovable things like that. We're gonna now press the square pad with the finger button. Basically, it's the touchpad in the middle of the PS4 controller. So now we have three whole things of our inventory. We have map, inventory, and charms, and journal. We have four, I was wrong. So now, this tells us information about every enemy that we have fought in. From the Crawlid to, you know, the False Knight. And basically, there are two means of unlocking data. You unlock one for just killing one in general. You unlock the second by killing the, uh, the amount that it tells you. For every boss, it is one. For every um, other enemy, it's probably around 30 to like 20 and for the harder enemies like the boulder here 
That is not a harder enemy. For the Husk Guard, you needed to kill six to get unlock that the Hunter's Notes. That's it. It depends on... Have I died? No, I haven't died. The so shade is when you kill. When you die, this is what happens. You could have to fight a shade. They'll explain more when I die for the first time, but I guess it just shows up. Um, yeah, this rest of the stuff, that just tells you about the enemy. There's like a thousand enemies or something. Okay, it's not that many, but it's a lot of enemies. But we've made some pretty fantastic progress, I'd like to say. So I'm actually going to leave it right here. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the Crash channel. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.